everyone welcome to my channel my name is Donna from axeratech.com and I help take you from the classroom to the extra room with ease in today's video I'm going to be discussing oblique ribs the positioning meaning the body's position of ARIO, LAO, LPO, RPO as well as a brief um, mention of the centering and breathing techniques and marker placement like how you position your markers I'm in need of an x-ray I'm back live in the flesh kind of well on your screen anyway in my classic axiotic t-shirt because it's so awesome to not have to worry about what I'm wearing also in glasses that's a new development I haven't even been wearing it for a week yet and it's taking some getting used to and when it gets smudges it's the most annoying thing in the world so I don't know how you all deal with it I now understand the struggle. So big ribs. This is a topic that I have actually had some issues with in the past as a student and when I learned about the defining things that make it what it is in terms of the body positioning and the side that you're looking at and which side further or towards the detector it made life so much easier. Right so I'm gonna explain that to you all and hopefully after this video next time you see a rib x-ray on a request form you're not gonna be like oh my gosh why you know you're gonna be like oh ribs let me see if i can get a perfect rib exposure a perfect rib x-ray okay right? so let's talk about it you have ario you have lao one obviously is left anterior oblique and the other is right now what we are going to do is decipher what that means for us in terms of our patient's position this is our bucky here right let's pretend we know oblique means that we are at an angle we are not completely um straightforward nor completely perpendicular we're off at a at a certain degree and anterior meaning the anterior portion of the body in this case will be facing the direction of the detector so right anterior oblique means that the right side the anterior part of the body facing it and in this case right anterior means right front part of the body is touching or closer to the detector if it was a left anterior oblique then the left anterior aka front left anterior part of the body is touching the detector right so that clears up that part now with the posterior obliques it means that the posterior part of the body or the back of the body would be facing or closer to the detector if we imagine that i'm standing in front of a detector right now if they ask for a right posterior oblique it's because my right side of my body is closer to the detector or a left posterior oblique meaning that the left back portion of my body is closer to the detector that's all the rpo and lpo and lao and rao means right so now that we get that out of the way we need to now decipher okay so if the patient says that the front left side is and what do i do and this is where the confusion tends to come in for students and even radiographers because sometimes I even now even though i know this sometimes i have to stop and think okay it's the right side so i'm going to do x y and z right so let's focus on the LAO. So in an LAO position, we know now that the left front side is towards the detector. Now, if that's the case, then we can be looking at the left side of the ribs of the patient because that curvature there will, will allow us a superimposition of the anterior and posterior part of the ribs. And we won't really be able to see if there's a fracture. However, on the right side, we have nice elongation. The angulation of the ribs will show up where we can see the entire length of the ribs due to that curvature. We know how the ribs curve on our body. So if you're doing a left anterior oblique, it's because you want to look at the right side of the patient. And in these oblique x-rays for ribs, the angulation is 45 degrees. So you could just estimate that 45 degree rotation of the body to the detector similarly if it's a right anterior oblique my right side of my right front side will be towards the detector but we get that nice elongation or we can see the entire length of the 
left rib. So with anterior oblique ribs, you see the opposite side. So if you have a left anterior oblique, you're actually looking at the right side. And the right side will be away. So this is how I learned it, anterior away. Left anterior oblique here, we're looking at the right anterior ribs. Good? Anterior ribs away. Yeah, the side that is away. Now, in contrast, when we look at posterior ribs, so let's imagine that the board is behind me. If I have a right posterior oblique position, that means my right side is towards the bucket, the posterior, the back part of me, is touching the image receptor side, and my left side is further away. But the difference between anterior obliques and posterior obliques is that when we're looking at the back part of the ribs, we actually want the back part closer to the board. So, anterior is the ribs that are away, and posterior is the ribs that are closer, right? So, if I have a right posterior oblique, it's because I'm actually looking at the right side, right? So, I hope that also helps. So, whether your patient is lying down because of trauma that they can't stand, or if they are erect, this is how you differentiate which position you want to put them in. If they complain that their left side on the front is hurting on top here, then you position the right side closer because it's anterior ribs away from the board, but facing it. And if it's the left back ribs that are hurting, the back part of the ribs are hurting, then you position the left side towards the board because the posterior ribs we want it to be closer remember it's all about your angulations when you think about the curvature of the body it just has to make sense regarding the ap or the pa ribs i mean it is what it is right so if you're looking at the ribs above the diaphragm you would center normally as if it's a chest right in most cases that's what they want to see anyway because patients usually get a blow to the chest is usually on top here Right, so you typically do like a normal chest x-ray because you're centering at T7, which is about 3 to 4 inches below the jugular notch, right, right at the center here. Then you use a rib exposure, which is lower KV and higher MAS to get some detail of the bone, yet still see some detail with the heart and stuff because you want to give like, hit, kill two birds with one stone, that's the phrase, you're not actually killing birds. You know, it's some kind of graphic now that I say it, but you want to include the boat. You want to give the doctor some chest detail, but of course you want to make sure that your ribs are properly exposed in this case. But for your obliques, I mean, it's the same thing regarding the centering of the uppermost side. So you'll be at the level at about T7, which is 3 to 4 inches below the juggler. Not you could estimate that. If you are doing the lower ribs, then you want to go even lower to that, which is at xiphoid process T9, T10. To include, at least from T9, the entire length, remember the ribs kind of slope down. So you want to include from 9 till the bottom of 12 to make sure you include everything. Right, so all that changes there is that you drop your center in a bit. Nothing too drastic. I hope that cleared that up, right, what you got, and I'm going to do a recap, so... Don't be worried. I'll have it in a little table at the end so it'll be even more concise for you all. You can just screenshot that. So I'm actually recording this section after because I just remember that I said I would have talked about this but I didn't. And that is your breathing techniques. When you have the uppermost ribs, you want to breathe on inspiration. Right? So big breath in and hold. Right? Now when you have, because you remember it's air and you'll get some more contrast because your lungs will fill up with air and you'll get to see the bone nicely through that, right? And with the lower ribs, when that is of interest, you expose on expiration. You want the diaphragm to raise so that it doesn't just cut through the center there and cause any superimposition or disturbance like that. The last thing I want to talk about is the marker position. Now think about if you're doing a chest x-ray, right? As the same thing applies. If we're looking at the left side, whether it's anterior or posterior, we usually would use a marker for the side that we are looking at, right? Now if you're looking at 
anterior ribs remember the body is facing the image receptor or the bucky so you need to put your marker pa as well right because it's passing through the back of your body and going to the front right so your marker will be pa and if you're doing it um if you're looking at the posterior ribs or your face and the tube and the detector is behind you then you put your marker normally because it's an AP projection even though it's a posterior position right so I hope that clears that up I'll leave the table at the end just to make it easy for you all but just to say it lastly one last time anterior ribs your face and your bucky and it's the side that's away posterior ribs your back against the bucky and it's the side that is closer. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!